smart brains have been conditioned to believe that death is the end. I mean, it is the end of our physical body. And if you think about it though, we as humans, we tend to only believe what we can see or feel. So it really kind of makes sense that we would just automatically think that death is the end. But what if it's not? I honestly didn't think much about it um, until my son died. And then I became obsessed with knowing. I'm Emily Graham, bereaved parent and grief coach at After Child Loss. If you've experienced child loss and are trying to survive grief and this life after, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell. What happens when we die? Where do we go? Before the death of your child, you likely had an idea, um, but you probably didn't really spend much time validating it, and that is completely normal. A part of our upbringing is that we tend to believe what other people around us have told us, right? And it isn't until it impacts you on a deeply personal level that you really stop and consider if what you've believed all along is true. When I work with bereaved parents, um, one of the things I do is I challenge them to test and validate their own belief systems. What you believe has a tremendous influence over how you live your life and how you experience your grief. This challenging of the belief system, um, it's never about me trying to influence what it should look like or tell you what you should believe. It's really about you discovering through your own personal choice what really fits with you and kind of helping them to reconnect with their child. Now, before you think we're going on some crazy psychic expedition, right, some mission to talk to the dead, um, we are not. While I 100% believe that a good, legitimate medium reading can be a total game changer, that's not what this video is about. As we challenge what we're taught to believe about grief, um, that also means that we have to challenge what we believe about death. So I like to ask people, where did your child go? That makes death really personal. The term heaven, it sort of creates this idea for people, right? But when your child dies, that idea isn't often concrete enough. I believe that death is only the end of the physical body, that our soul, our consciousness continues to live on. Because of that, I believe that our relationship can continue. So what does that look like? It can be different for everyone, right? For some, it's in the form of signs. Um, my son sends me hearts and twelves, and I have so many stories that I could share, and I know a lot of other parents feel the same way. Um, for others, they have these one-sided conversations with their child, even inside their head, right? It can make you feel like you're a little bit crazy, but I completely believe that they can still hear you. I believe that any time you think of them or say their name, they sort of tune in, right? They know. So this t-shirt that I'm wearing, it's from my son. He didn't buy it for me, but it represents one of the ways that our relationship continues. He and I loved thrift store shopping, right? We loved a good thrift store. Um, he was seven. He would always find a game or a book or something fun. So he was always in, right? It was kind of like a treasure hunt. We had an inside joke about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I loved the cartoon growing up. He would sometimes watch the reboot and we had sort of this fake argument going back and forth about which one was better. And so every time that we would see something related to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, we would sort of call it out as which one's better, right? And we would giggle. So a few years after he died, this was just a couple years ago, um, I was in a thrift store. It was a new one. He would have loved it. And there at the end of a clothing rack, not in the section that it should have been in, was this t-shirt in the perfect size. I bought it. Um, so these are sort of the fun, random purchases, right, that we would have done before. Um, and I feel like he's still sort of participating in, right? So don't shy away from these types of experiences. Um, while I would give anything to change the circumstances, I can't. So this is kind of the next best thing. There is um, this old Celtic saying that heaven and earth are only three feet apart. Think about that, three feet. That means that we can literally reach out our hand and touch it. So if our children are that close, 
and they can still hear us and they still exist, then why can't our relationships continue? This is the part where most people sort of step back or interject with, but it's not the same. And no, it's not the same. It's not going to be the same. It's never going to be as good as having them back, but it's something. And something is better than nothing. There is a lot of research out there that suggests the people who continue to build that bond and carry that relationship forward, even after death, have a much easier time carrying their grief and moving forward. You don't have to be tied to that pain, right? You don't have to have that pain in order to stay connected to your child. Healing the pain is not the same as getting over it. Um, Finding a way forward is never a betrayal for them. It's simply realizing that you can move your grief from a place of overwhelming desperation and misery to a place of love and of continued connection. This is a place where grief and life both coexist together. This relationship is how we carry our children forward with us, right? As we keep living, they come along for the ride. If you aren't sure what you believe, explore it. Take that love that you aren't sure what to do with now that they're not physically here and keep giving it to them. If you found this video at all helpful, please subscribe, like, or share. Thank you.